episode of Rive's Creative Journal. My name is Geneviève. I am Geneviève.Versapin on Instagram, uh, Versapin on Ravelry, and you are on the YouTube channel of Rive Company, which is an online shop um, selling all you need for knitting, sewing. Um, we have online classes to learn how to sew as well. And uh, our Instagram is just a general, general dose of inspiration, we hope. <laughs> we work towards that. Uh, for this uh, new episode, so it's been a while since I've been here. Um, just summer is a completely different beat for everyone. And I don't know about you, but I feel like with... Um, having two doses of the vaccine and my family being the same, we are kind of playing social catch up. So uh, seeing each other a lot and maybe anticipating a bit of a hard autumn. So just really enjoying summer and enjoying seeing each other while whilst we can. Uh, yeah, so having a really nice summer. So I've been away from my studio a lot. Um, if you are interested in uh, entrepreneurship, <laughs> this is my first summer as an entrepreneur and I really see the difference in terms of vacation mode. It doesn't really exist. It's like you are in vacation but you cannot unplug completely and that's fine. Um, it's expected. So instead, you're sort of trying to rest uh, everywhere you can. So each day you have a little bit of rest built in because you want to charge your batteries for the autumn to come. So it's not like full on uh, unplugging vacations. It's like semi vacation mode all summer, <laughs> something like that. Um, so yeah, let's start with a bit of knitting. So I don't have much much to show as I said, but uh, I wanted to uh, touch base and just uh, come on to this channel and uh, Maybe inject some inspiration have some from you guys in the comments and uh, so on so Knitting I am wearing the first obvious finished object. So this is my Celeste tee by Sari Norlund and I'm, I like it so much. I love it. Um, I finished it a couple of weeks ago and I've been wearing it tons. Let me just get up and show you the length. So it is, uh, I would say not cropped, not long, just right here at the hips. So I can tuck it into my uh, pants. It goes very well with my Pietra pants which is in the little flowers cotton lawn uh, that we have in the shop. And this I knit in um, Les Arts Textiles du Temiscuata at the base is Brise, which is cotton linen. And we have it in the shop at Rive, it is exclusive to Rive. We still have some sweater quantities, I think two or three. Uh, and the shop is currently as of now on sale for, uh, this is coming out Friday, so it's still on sale for two or three days. So, and the summer um, summer items like the Brise are, uh, are quite, the price is quite reduced. So have a look if you like. I love this yarn, it is, um, it's soft. I, I think I've talked about it quite a bit in the other journals, but just to go over it quickly, it is a uh, cellulose, cellulose fiber, so it's not like merino soft. It is soft for a cotton linen yarn. It's like if it's, uh, it makes me think of washed linen or washed cotton. Uh, it's real, yeah, it's kind of really dry and soft. I really enjoy it. and. I think the stitch definition is really cool. Uh, I was worried that it wouldn't be so uh, defined, and I think it, the um, the lace really came out beautifully on this. And uh, Sari Nordon is it's so great that she comes up with these really um, intricate lace patterns that are really easy to knit. Like it's not. I have followed the chart 
all the way through. I haven't like memorized the pattern as such, but you could, you definitely, definitely could. I just didn't want to make a mistake, but it start, it starts to become logical at some point and it's really easy. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Sari Nordlund. People were seeing me knit this uh, sweater all summer and just being in awe, like, oh, you are so talented. That's incredible that you can make that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the designer is really talented and just following along and being impressed myself of uh, what she created. I really, really love it. I, w I s would say it's not the most affordable sweater I've ever made because it's, um, it's supposed to be just a fun summer sweater and it took me five skeins, so four and a half skeins. Uh, it's held double, so I held the fingering yarn double. But I don't mind because it's a really special piece. I really enjoy wearing it and I have compliments all the time. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the uh, the neckline is quite wide. You can see it dips in the back also. And I didn't do the recommended cast on. She calls for a tubular cast on, but I saw that it was going to be too wide. So I did a regular long tail cast on and it's still pretty wide. So just maybe be aware of that. And I modified the sleeve length, so she has a short sleeve, but that come just above uh, the elbow and that's not really flattering on me. And I was also worried that it was going to be too hot, so I just uh, shortened them. I think I did four rows of stockinette before I started the ribbing, once I picked up for the sleeve. So yeah, really, really short sleeve and I really enjoy them. So I've been road testing this one. Uh, it's been really hot here. We are, I didn't say, but we are in uh, Montérégie near Montreal. And it's been super hot and I've been wearing it and not feeling like I wanted to rip it off. <laughs> uh, yeah, so really, really great addition to my wardrobe, I would say. And this is the color 13 of uh, the Brise, which is sold out, so I shouldn't mention it. Uh, but really, really like My Celeste T by Sari Nolund. Uh, I've had a question for bind-offs. I'm a bit... Um, I feel like I don't know much about bind-offs. Uh, I usually go for a simple, um, simple regular bind-off using bigger needles. That's what gives me the best result. Uh, I've played around with tubular bind-offs and stretchy bind-offs and I always feel like it's quite bulky and um, I don't get the, a sleek result with these bind-offs. Um, tubular bind-off, no, I don't really enjoy it. One that I really like is the Icelandic bind-off, but I would say it works really well on um, yarn that is going to fluff, like thicker yarn or fingering yarn that is really going to open when, uh, once you wash it because it really fills in that kind of braid that the Icelandic bind off makes the Icelandic bind off makes and it's really pretty I feel like it adds a detail on my shirt it's not like a subtle bind off that is going to disappear into the garment I feel like it adds a bit of something and I really enjoy that so my two cents on bind offs but I'm sure there are tons out there that I need to experiment with uh, as regards to uh, current projects, I'm working on a lot of tests and most of them are secret. So uh, it, I'm doing it for friends, so I'm really happy about it, but I, uh, I've been um, not doing tests for a while and now I'm involved in three, so how did that happen? Uh, so I cannot really show you. I am showed you, I think last time, the test I have going on for fiber tails, which is not secret. But unless I missed an email, I think this test is still on pause. But this sweater is calling my name. It wants to be finished. So it is um, a simple tee uh, that I'm knitting in merino wool. So I'm kind of experimenting with um, having a t-shirt in wool. Will I wear it? in? Will it be useful in my road, my wardrobe? Uh, but I want to finish it to have it for the beginning of autumn. 
So I think uh, the test is still on pause. I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish it with the instructions as they are, trying to figure it out for myself. And then once it, the test goes back on, just keep, uh, I could knit it, knit it again, or uh, just keep in mind the modifications when I give my comments or something like that. I think it would be fine because I really want to finish it and wear it. And then the other test I'm working on is a uh, secret, but I can show you the yarn I'm using uh, without showing you the design. Yeah. So I am using, this is uh, the chaussette by Les Arts Textiles du Temisquata, which we have in the shop. And I am so enjoying it, enjoying working with it. It is in the moonshine colorway which is just a really soft pink and here in this section I am holding it double with a uh, mohair so it is Ursuline in the mama colorway and I'm really enjoying these design patterns where you have mohair but it's not running all the way through so you see um, you feel like you have a color work project but not really it's just that when the mohair is not there anymore you see the main color really shining I really enjoy the, it I think it's really subtle and I really enjoy that and this test is not going to be secret for long I think in two or three weeks it should be out and then I have another test which is a uh, secret for a couple months but it uh, uses um, mini skeins or uh, leftovers so I, uh, I just want to make a bit of a segue here. Um, one of the reasons I don't have much to show is that I have been doing a lot of decluttering in my studio. Um, it was overdue. The tipping point was when the closet I have for storing my uh, materials and, and stuff in my studio wouldn't close anymore, so it was too full. And I was feeling a bit, uh, how to say, I was feeling heavy when entering my studio. Like I had so much stuff calling for my attention, so much projects uh, that I didn't want to do anymore. Like I had three, um, I had three box full of fabrics that I bought when I started sewing that I didn't know what uh, what materials I liked or needed so they weren't very they weren't really suited to the kind of sewing I'm doing now but I was keeping them like at some point in the future I will have time to make a project in an unsatisfying fabric for no reason <laughs> you know um, if you are a knitter you probably like when you say to your family that you knit you they're all, there's always someone that comes to you saying like, oh, you knit, that's so great. I have a stash of yarn that I would like to give you. And it's always like acrylic yarn, it's fine. But if it's not your jam, like it's not what you like to knit, you say, oh, thank you. And then you keep it and stash it. And for what reason? Like at some point you are gonna need a lot of acrylic yarn? Not, no. <laughs> if you enjoy um, knitting with, uh, hand dyed or natural fibers or whatever, you're not gonna go back to that acrylic yarn. It's really thoughtful of the person to give it to you, but you need to know what you like. And only, I feel I was ready to keep only what inspires me, what I wanna work with and let go of the rest. So I've been doing that and it's been so great. It's like I've shed layers of expectations for myself. I have a rip back projects uh, that I was not going to finish. I had projects that only need a couple of finishings that I didn't touch for more than a year. So this just is like a bell ringing saying I don't really like that project. So I have ripped them. I have, uh, I have um, my uh, sister-in-law is a teacher and she needs uh, scraps of fabrics and yarns for projects in uh, her, uh, her art class. So I have a big bag of it for her. 
I have made boxes of fabric to give and I'm gonna find the right place to give it to I think a community group, a local community group that would be happy to have them. So just doing every step I can to have them not end up in landfill if I can, but truthfully, I'm not gonna use them. So why am I storing them forever and ever? It's like weigh weighing on me and not making me feel inspired. So I've just let go of all of that. I have really, I think I've been really good. I, I could have a second go at some point of decluttering. Probably I would go even further in my decluttering, but right now I'm happy. I'm inspired by my studio. I have made space in a corner. Like I have a whole new space. I have space for an armchair which I didn't have. So now I have a place to knit in my studio. Um, I'm so, because, you know, the living room has become like baby station. <laughs> so now I have a place just for me for, to, to knit in my armchair in the morning before my son wakes up. I'm so happy. I meditate in that corner. It makes all the difference in the world. If you are thinking about it, I really encourage you to take the time to do it. I feel like it is a whole new place. I feel like I've kept only the materials that really inspire me. And uh, yeah, that, that gives me a lot of my motivation for my craft, my crafts. <laughs> so yeah, segue, segue finished. Uh, to say that I have now a box of well-organized leftovers. So I've, I've put them all in one place and this project, this secret test I have to do, I'm just really looking forward to take out the leftovers and organize them and see what colors I can match together to make the project. So more on that later. So a bit of sewing. Uh, I haven't been at my machines a lot because I've been out of the house uh, most days, but I have still sewn my favorite garment of the summer, the winter. It is, oops, stepping on it. It is the Penny Dress by Sew Over It, which is uh, my favorite summer dress. I now have three of them and it never disappoints. It is the best. <laughs> so I have sewn it in an Atelier Brunette Viscose Palmetto Night, which is available in the shop and discounted for a couple days still. So the Penny Dress by Sew Over It has um, a collar, but no under collar, so it's quite unstructured. It's really casual and pretty. It has a shoulder piece in which the front and the back bodice will gather. It's really pretty and grown on sleeve, so the sleeves are part of the bodice. It's really, really pretty and flattering, I feel. It doesn't have any bust dart because uh, the fullness of the bust disappears into the gathers at the waist and at the shoulders. And a button placket. So it, it calls for three buttons and I did put three buttons uh, with the same uh, measurements I did for my first two versions. But I ended up adding a fourth because I am at that stage in my life where I want uh, my neckline to be a bit more um, modest, let's say. <laughs> uh, and I have put these Atelier Brunette classic matte button in the tangerine colorway. Really a really cool pop of color that goes with the pop of color in the fabric. And then you have an elasticated waist so this makes it so comfortable and so easy to fit because you only really have to fit the elastic at your waist and then the bodice comes in to the exact measurement you want and the skirt as well. So it's really easy for the fit to have this elasticated waist and it's really comfortable to wear. And then a full circle skirt. The full circle skirt moves, it uh, floats around your legs in the summer, it's, uh, it breathes so well because you have a lot of fabric that just moves and <laughs> it's really pretty. 
and it's really simple as well uh, the the skirt because it's just one seam on one of the sides and then you're ready to assemble with the bodice so it's not um I would say it's not a beginner beginner make because you have a few challenges like the color, like the button placket, like the gathers in the shoulder piece, but it is um, quite accessible. It could be just a more involved make for a beginner. And Sovereign always has really nice booklets that um, take you by the hand and really make the whole process easier. So I would say it's it could be just a nice challenge for someone who has sewn a couple of garments, a couple of simple garments and wants to tackle something a bit more complicated. The penny dress is really great and uh, the fit, as I said, is really easy because of the elasticated waist. So this is definitely a garment in which I feel my most uh, confident self favorite garment of the summer. I have a couple of uh, summer sewing projects I want to do before summer ends, if I can. So using fabrics from the shop, I want to use um, this gorgeous linen we have. There's not much left and the priority goes to you guys. So if it's all sold out, I will change my project. <laughs> no worries. But if it, uh, a, a small quantity remains for my project, I will be happy as well. Because I want to make a Martha dress by Solrit. I just realized that all the patterns I'm going to talk about are Solrit. It's my favorite company. <laughs> so I want to make the Martha dress by Solrit, which is a beautiful summer wrap dress uh, with a midi length uh, skirt and uh, a sleeveless bodice, really really pretty dress and I think it would be gorgeous in this linen, maybe somewhat wrinkly but it's summer you can get away with a wrinkly linen dress, can't you? And I will use this viscose, so this really pretty um, viscose crepe, so we call it viscose crepe because it has a slight texture in it like a crepe texture but it's a hundred percent viscose and it's really 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 soft and drapey and I want and it's look it's so pretty so I think it's called flower flowery fields or something like that in the lilac colorway and I want to make myself a skirt I realize I don't have any summer skirts uh, I have dresses and pants and shirts so I'm I want a skirt. Uh, I have a really pretty purple uh, t-shirt that I just made for the intro to knit uh, class. That would be, I think, really well matched with this fabric. So uh, there are a lot of nice skirt patterns out there. I really want a skirt with uh, gathers in the waist and a button placket that goes down on the front and uh, patch pockets. That's what I wanted. Although maybe this fabric is not great for patch pocket. I may have to rethink that, but I think I'm gonna try it out and see. Um, because for patch pockets, you need some kind of structure. The fabric, if it's too drapey, might the pockets might just lose their shape, but I think I'm gonna try it anyhow and see. Uh, I have a uh, couple of patterns out there that are great. Uh, I think the estuary skirt by Soul Liberated would fit that description. But I have in my um, stash of patterns already, I have the Summer Dreaming Capsule Wardrobe. It's an ebook by Soul Rit. And in there is the Sienna dress pattern, which uh, you can turn into a skirt. So you can do a standalone skirt from that pattern so that's what I'm gonna do. I think it fits the description perfectly and uh, it looks like a lovely pattern so I'm gonna try it out and maybe make myself a skirt, a flowery skirt before summer ends. Isn't that a good idea? <laughs> and then I feel uh, I have sort of unplugged from social media this summer. I felt like I needed to um, 
have less inputs like I had I had had too many inputs uh, in the lead up to summer and I needed to unplug so I uh, I now feel like I've had my rest and I'm ready to have some inputs again because I need inspiration so I want to m perhaps take some time like during a nap or uh, of my son or something to like take out all my sewing patterns that I have and uh, try to find some inspiration for autumn also browse around Ravelry to have some pattern inspiration maybe you watch a couple of my favorite podcasts uh, which I have kind of ignored this summer and uh, yeah just to get myself inspired I feel I'm, I'm ready for it I have decluttered my studio I have uh, taken a break from social media I'm ready to uh, be filled with inspiration again so that is my plan for autumn sewing and knitting projects uh, yeah to get myself inspired and maybe draw my projects uh, that's something I used to enjoy and I haven't done in a while to uh, plan for my projects and draw on silhouettes and stuff you have a lot of free resources online where you can draw your project on uh, uh, on silhouettes and it makes it really like pretty for your um, journal and inspiring and you can sort of envision um, a logical wardrobe like pieces that are going to go together instead of making stuff that just stands alone and has no friend in your wardrobe and you can see more easily where you might have some gaps uh, where you have too much of something etc and even color wise and stuff so i think i'm gonna do that do a bit of planning and maybe share it with you guys next time uh left to talk about is a bit of um of botanical dyeing so i've talked about it last time uh, last time, just to remind you, I showed you, um, so I made an avocado bath, like quite a large bath. I had frozen some avocado pits and skins for a year and I have, so just to test it out, I don't know if freezing the material is like a big no-no, I have decided to try it out. Um, and it turned out that I had, I tr I'm going to try to insert a clip here. Uh, it turned out a really gorgeous peach, like really deep peach. Uh, I had two skeins of um, mouton fingering, so rustic uh, fingering yarn, and three skeins of mohair. And it turned out really pretty, but not a color I wear, and not a color suited for my project. So I had in mind why I made the bath in the first place is that I have a sweater quantity of these, which is uh, Urso Nord in the Licorne colorway, which is really pretty. And I want to make myself a novice chunky cardigan by Petite Knit. And I need a mohair to pair with it to meet gauge. Uh, so I thought avocado pink, maybe I can make myself just a subtle uh, avocado pink mohair to go pick up those pinks in the licorne colorway and then it turned out really deep peach with what which was way too warm for this color for this yarn so what i thought and and talked about last time is that i would modify the bath with iron to try to modify the color and get to something i would wear or use for this project but then I thought my uh, skeins are pretty uh, dark and even if I modify it, it's gonna stay dark or even darker. So it, it still wouldn't be good with this project. So if you follow, I have my bath that has had a first exhaust and I hadn't modified it yet. So what I did is I took three new skeins of mohair and put them in the bath to try to get a more subtle color, so a bit lighter color. So I left them there about a quarter of the time that I left the other one, uh, the other ones in, to get a more light, uh, a lighter peach color, which happened. 
and then I modified this bath like without drying the skins or anything just dipping some iron water in the bath and it cooled the bath down a lot and it turned out this really really pretty gray which is kind of a if the camera can pick it up which is kind of a brownie gray that is what I love with botanical dyeing is how subtle the colors are with many variations dep depending on light and everything it's really pretty and it has some nuances because um, well this these one don't have much it's pretty even color I'm going to show you the other part of the experiment and now it goes really well with my uh, no. so for the project it's gonna pick up instead of picking up the pinks I'm gonna pick up the grays in it I think it's gonna be really pretty so I'm really looking forward to cast on the uh, the cardigan and then I think I talked about this already but uh, the novice cardigan is a yoke construction and I'm really on the lookout for a, a cardigan that is gonna stay on my shoulders so I'm hoping that because of the construction I've already made the novice sweater which I really like and I'm just really excited to try this cardigan version and see if it sits on my shoulders nicely I have modified my bath at this point so it's really cooled down so what I did is I took those really deep peach uh, skeins that had dried off and just put them in the bath and heat it up once more and I was expecting grey so I was expecting those peach to turn maybe a medium grey or something but the beauty of the botanical dyeing process is you never know it turned out brown and such a gorgeous brown it's kind of a, a latte brown uh, but still has kind of grayish undertones, peachy undertones. It's really, really pretty. It's really, really pretty. I'm pretty. I'm so happy. This is much more my uh, type of color. I definitely can't wear this. And the mohair, I think they were kind of uh, rust flex in my iron water, and the mohair picked up uh, on it. So some spots went gray because of the iron flex, the rusty flex. It's kind, of, it's kind of a an odd quantity of yarn, but I think I could make myself um, a slip over. It's something I've never done before. I want to play with that, and I am um, I'm thinking the Stockholm slip over by Petite Knit, but I'm maybe I'm gonna look around Ravelry see. If I see something with uh, texture also, I would be happy. So the Stockholm is really quite minimalistic, which makes it really pretty. But I could also go for something with texture, so I'm going to have a look around. Or maybe just add texture to the Stockholm. I can do that as well. So really happy about this. And I also had a dress uh, that I, I put in the first bath. Um, so it was... Uh, it is a toile that I made, so it was white. Uh, it was it's the Centauri dress by Diarando. I made a toile, and then I thought I would dye uh, this toile to have a dress that is not white, basically that I wouldn't wear. Um, and it turned out peach, but light peach because it is uh, cotton fibers. It doesn't take the dye the same way as the yarn, so it turned out a light peach. Uh, which was fine, but I did not see myself wearing it. And so I put it in the bath, of the, in the iron bath. And it turned out really pretty, uh, grayish. It looks kind of pink because of the sun, but it's a really like muted gray, muted mocha color or something like that. Really pretty. I've already worn it a couple of times. I really, really enjoy that color. And it goes really well with, I'm gonna show you. It goes well with my Darren T by Jacqueline C. Slack. 
that I showed you in uh, another episode. So it's a really like romantic combo, those two together. Oh, it's really pretty. I really enjoy wearing these two together. So I, I did the, I did make that tee to go with the Santoré dress, but in the other fabric that is quite of a um, strong uh, sky blue. So it's a really different vibe. <laughs> it depends on my mood, but this combo is much more romantic and um, uh, yeah, and soft. And the other one is more striking. So depending on how I'm feeling or the event I'm going to, I uh, mix and match. And I've been wearing it a couple times without doing the hem on it. So I still haven't done my hem. Nobody noticed. I'm gonna do it at some point, but <laughs> it's fine. So that is it for my projects. Uh, so I've been uh, enjoying summer a lot, and now I'm. Uh, we knitters have a nose for autumn coming. It's. <laughs> I feel like it's not around the corner yet, but almost, and it may. It's sort of time to start thinking about autumn projects which makes me really happy as it does every year. I'm really excited to cast on those big cozy knits. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Uh, I, hope you, I hope you have taken some inspiration from it. Um, leave me a comment if you like. I always enjoy reading comments and subscribe to the channel. That would be much appreciated. And um, yeah. Just, I hope next episode to have full of autumn inspiration, as I said, and uh, just take care and see you next time. Bye.